Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Warash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sensei, Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing and sincere salutations, as always, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bread among that number, which are the Hebrews, like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is an epistle that I had entitled Fruits Meet for Repentance. Okay? And I wanted to start this one off by getting the book of uh, St. Luke, chapter 3. Start from the top at verse 1. And the subheading says, John the Baptist preaches. Verse 1. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Eterea, and of the regions of Trachonitis and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene. Ananias and Caiaphas, being the high priests, the word of the Most High Yahweh came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Verse 3, And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Verse 4, As it is written in the book of of the words of Isaiah the prophet saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his paths straight okay verse 5 every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth Verse 6, and all flesh shall see the salvation of the Most High, Yahweh. Okay. Verse 7, then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that the Most High is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Verse 9, And now also the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth forth not good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. All right? So, right here, this precept, um, right here in the book of Luke, it's a little more roundabout. Because you may not be aware of who he's referring to, but when you get this same precept <clears throat> in the book of <clears throat> Salakia, in the book of Matthew, all right, it shows you who John the Baptist was speaking to. So Matthew chapter three, verse seven, and it reads, "But when the wait, Salakia, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism." He said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that the Most High Yahweh is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Okay, so right here he was speaking to the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees. All right, because not all of the Pharisees and the um, Sadducees was wicked. Those that believed on Yahweh Shah when he came and repented, okay, they were justified. Those men became, um, they were righteous. But right here for John the Baptist to say this, line upon line, precept upon precept, he was speaking to the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees. Why? Because they weren't fruit meat for repentance. And when you get repentance, it's the Hebrew word shawab, which means to return. Okay, and this is why John the Baptist, for you know, you Jakes that are still so stuck on water baptism, just like these wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, you you basically don't understand and you err not knowing the scriptures. You you don't under you just don't get it. This is why in John the third chapter that your Lord Yahweh Shah basically said to Nicodemus that art thou a master of Israel and you know not these things basically you know if you claim to be on the level it should be easy for you 
to receive when a man of the Lord is telling you that water baptism doesn't cleanse sins because that was always one of our customs, but it never stopped Jake from being wicked, which is why John the Baptist has said that the one that comes after me is more mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the spiritual cleansing is what actually makes you worthy in the eyes of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. The spiritual cleansing is how you'll actually be able to shawab, which means repent or return back to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. But if you fully persuaded in your own mind to be wicked and do what you feel like doing, all right, it's no point. Like Elder Manatsu Zakba said, you know, if you, you was a demon before, you know, you was walking around on demon time and you go in and they get a water baptism and you just came back up a wet demon, you didn't change. It didn't stop you from wanting to commit adultery. It didn't stop you from wanting to be um, a serial deleter. It didn't stop you from wanting to line up, uh, line up your brother, or your sister, or do all types of wickedness. You're still the same person. And like I was speaking to, uh, you know, the blood brother Shapada Twelve about this, um, this metaphor I was thinking about through the spirit. You know, we understand that fruits meet for repentance. All right, we understand that the scriptures are symbolic, and there's parables that get spoken. All right, and we understand that the fruits. Fruits gets into uh, your works, all right? So when we have our teachers, like, for example, the Apostle and the Elders of Great Millstone, all right? Those that learn the doctrine, the truth of the scriptures from the Apostle and Elders of Great Millstone through the Spirit of Psyche, like, yeah. the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone through the, through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai would be considered the fruits of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, all right? Or, the, you know, the fruits of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai through the men that he's using on earth today, which are the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone. Okay, so fruits meet for repentance would be Hebrew Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and speckled bird Israelite foreigners that look like heathen but are Israelites that actually want to repent. So the analogy I used when I was speaking to the Blood Brothers of the Twelve was basically, okay, you have, you have, let's just say, two apples fall to the ground from off of a tree. Both apples hit the dirt and they got dirt on them. All right. So you pick up one apple and you wash it with water. The water that you wash it with is the word of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, the truth of the scriptures. Right. So when you let's just say you have it in your spirit to slice open one of the apples, the apple that's in your right hand. And after you wash it off of water, you slice it open. You see the apple, you know, it looks great. So you, you take a bite of it. You partake in it. Then the apple that's in your left hand, you wash this one off with the water of the word, just like you did the one to the right, the one that's in your right hand. But when you open it up, you see worms and mold and, you know, maggots and all types of insects inside of it. So you will what? You would toss that away, which is why right here, okay, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 10, it reads, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, Every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Right. And we understand ultimately that fire is the ICBM nuclear missile destruction. That's the lake of fire and brimstone, which is Babylon the Great, the US of A, America being hit and pelted by these ICBM nuclear missiles, you know, fired off by Russia and these other nations that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has set in array against Babylon the Great. As well as the chariot fire, the concentrated laser beam fire that are going to come, that are going to come from the chariots of the Lord, which Esau calls the so-called UFOs, but they're actually the chariots of the Lord, where our brethren, the angels, are um, that are operating, so they can actually destroy this place. Thus saith the Lord. So, any Israelite that is not a fruit meet for repentance is going to be found out, and they're going to be cast into the fire. So, yeah, we all get washed with the word, you know, for those of us that heard it, I'll say it like that. We get washed with the word. But Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, he's the judge as to whether or not you ultimately are a fruit meet for repentance. Because you've had individuals that heard the word, did the work for a season, and then they fell out the truth for a number of reasons because the Lord was rejecting them. And that manifested in the way of them leaving the truth because of a woman or because of offenses between them and another brother. You know, and offenses will arise, as the scripture says, but woe unto him that, that offenses may um, may come. But the point is, you ain't supposed to take your hand off the plow. And one precept that always comes to my mind that sticks out to me, even if I don't remember the exact, <clears throat> every exact uh, verse 
in that chapter was when uh, the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Barnabas had a contention. When the contention between them got too thick, they basically separated. So, you know, they both separated from each other's company, but they still did the work of the Lord. Because ultimately, that's all, that's all it's about. And as far as the water, you know, both of these fruits being washed with water, one being clean on the inside and the other, you know, being dirty on the inside with maggots and everything else. Let me get a precept for that. Sometimes I get this one mixed up, so bear with me. Um, I think it's the book of Hebrews chapter 2. No, wait, Salakia. Hebrews chapter 6. Well, I'll just type it in, Salakia. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. The Wadi Habash Me Shah. All right. So, Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 1 from the top, and it reads The subject says, The believers rest. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem, Salakia. Let me read that again. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, and it reads Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it verse 2 and here's the point for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it right so like the analogy or the uh, the metaphor i gave about those two apples all right both apples fell from the same tree all right they hit the ground you know, dirt got on these apples, okay? And that's the other thing I, I forgot to mention that's just now coming to me through the spirit. The water help us me out shy. The dirt that got on those apples, you know, would be the world. It would be the world and all of the, the things thereof, you know. Uh, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, you know, the false doctrines, the uh the upbringing you had that was out of the, the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bash Me Shah, you know, that was outside of the ways the Lord would have you uh, brought up, okay? So these two apples, they both came from the same tree. All right. They're both Israelites. All right. They both hit the ground. You know, we both we all fell from our, our heritage. We hit the ground. All right. We, we fell from our heritage. We had the dirt of this world covered on us, the dirt of the heathen, their ways, their customs, their way of thinking. And, you know, the Lord, he picked us up. All right. Lord, Yahweh Shah picked us up and he washed us off with the word of the word. Okay. And he put us to the test, all right, with the baptism of fire, with the, which is the tribulation, that we have to go through the persecutions, the hardships. And when it came time to open up the fruits, you know, one fruit, you know, had the, uh, it was good on the inside, all right? The, in, the internal contents of that fruit was, it was what it needed to be, all right? An apple, it was ready to be eaten, good to go. The other fruit cut open, it had maggots, worms, mold, you know? You can't wash that off any further with the water, you know, because it didn't profit that. The, that fruit didn't have the faith. All right, it heard it, you know, it sounded cool to it. And that fruit ended up, you know, trying to be part of the fold for its own reasons. And that don't work for the Lord. That's not a fruit meat for repentance. All right, so... So that being said, let me get this other precept, Matthew chapter 23, and I'm going to get verse 25, and it reads, and this is read out of the Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, Salakia, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Even so, 
ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Right. So these individuals within the nation of Israel, all right, that have this, that actually fit this parable. So not, not so like you have this parable, but fit this precept. These individuals could be likened unto those apples that I, um, that I mentioned in the metaphor. All right. You're supposed to be washed by the word of the word. And you know, if you are already uh, chosen by Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, since before the foundation of the earth to be one of his elect, all right, the washing of the word, it gets, it, you know, it cleanses off the filth of this world from all of you. You still have to be within the world, but you don't get polluted and contaminated by, again, uh, by the world to the same extent that you may have once been while in it. And even on the internal, even, even, um, so like it out on the internal, even, even within your soul, you you um are receptive to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai and his word. You aren't offended in him. But for the fruit that basically got washed with the word, you was clean on the outside, but you were still filthy on the inside. Like our Lord said, full of dead man's bone and all uncleanliness. You know, and a white sepulchre, that, that's a beautiful aspect that our Lord gave us in his precept because a sepulchre is a burying place for dead people. So no matter how pretty you try to make it, it's still a burying place for dead people. You know, so the Lord is letting you know right there that no matter how, um, like, you know, there's an expression that we have in the world, you know, um, not that we have in the world, but I, that I heard in the world years ago, if I remember correctly, I think it was, um, I think it was something along the lines of, you know, you can't put, uh, you can't put sugar on shit and call it pancakes or something like that. But essentially this is kind of similar to that. You know, you can't basically try to dress up something that's filthy and put, you know, uh, uh, condiments on it. And then all of a sudden it becomes food that it don't work that way, you know, and Jake that that's um, that's straddling the fence. Jake that basically is not examining themselves daily, not making sure that they actually are counting the cost or Jake that thinks that they can just get by by going through the motions. They aren't fruit meat for repentance. They're that fruit that are going to be hewn down and cast into the fire. All right. And this was the problem that Jake had in the first place, which is why the Heavenly Father, he did away with the animal sacrifice, because with the animal sacrificial system. All right. The Lord always knew that it was never going to cleanse your sins. It was always a test of your faith. So that being said, he did away with it because it left. He was showing us that it left too much room for um, for hypocritical Jake's to keep faking the funk. But with the um, but with the sacrifice, our Lord Yahweh Shah gave us. Now every man is going to have to show forth what he truly has inside. It's going to manifest outside. So you can't hide anything. If you have any flaws about you, you have to pray to the Lord that he removes them in truth and sincerity. But faking the funk and trying to act like you're in the truth because of how much, uh, how many videos you do or, you know, how your garment looks or whatever you, whatever you may pride yourself on that's according to the law, it's not going to work because the Lord, he sees everything, man. And that brings me back to this precept. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. And it reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, right, which is actually part of the law, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. All right? Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Right? Because you got Jakes that'll forget that the Lord always wanted a true, sincere um, repentance from us. And that can only come if you if you truly change on the inside first and then it manifests on the outside. Just like when it comes to, the, you know, we have many precepts in the scriptures showing you that, you know, things start off in the spirit and then they manifest in the physical. All right. Like when you get the Lord's prayer, what does Lord Yahweh Shah says? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So that lets you know that right there, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he starts off with his uh, with the concepts of what he wants done, you know, in the heavenly realm. And then it manifests on the spiritual realm, it's like in the physical realm, um, by way of the vessels that he chooses to carry out his will. So likewise, we have to make sure that our spirit is in order so we can... Uh, be perfect vessels of manifesting the will of the heavenly father Yahweh Bashmi Shah. 
and it can be done if he sees uncleanliness in you he's going to toss you into the fire and it may not seem like it's right away to you and you may feel like you got time to dilly and dally but you don't because ultimately the lord you know if he sees that you're not clean he's going to put you on a path where you're going to ultimately go into that wood chipper one way or the other you're going to go you're going to be hewn down in that wood chipper and cast into the fire one way or the other and that even goes for jakes that are in the truth that know that the israelites that have been doing the work you know if, if jakes don't if you know if jake don't continue in the doctrine and truth and sincerity the lord will just he'll get rid of you and he's justified in doing so because he's the lord now it was the uh it was another precept I'm trying to remember what it was uh autoron ratazad comes back to me i know it had to do with Galatians. Okay, uh, let me do it this way. Oh, there you go. That's one of them. The Wadi Habash Miao Sha. Let me do it this way. The Wadi Habash Miao Sha. This is the book of Sirach, better known as Ecclesiastes, chapter 23, verse 19, and it reads. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. Right. So basically, all right, these type of individuals, they don't understand that the Lord, He always sees everything. They spend so much time in the flesh. It's like, yeah, we are angels. We like the beloved El Apostle Tar said earlier, we are indeed gods. Those are the they it's like those are the nation of Israel are indeed God's lowercase g because we're the children of the living power. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bash Miao Sha, he's uh with the what the world will call God with a capital G. He's the most high power. Alright? Now we are God's lowercase G, but we're in a human, we're in this human flesh until the Lord Yahweh Sha returns and he changes us into the incorruptible body that he has so we can actually fully um embrace our godly nature. But the point is, we spent like a good number of Jake spent so much time in the flesh that they forget who the Heavenly Father is. They forget the spiritual aspect of our Lord, that he's not bound by uh, human limitations. You can't hide from him. You can't uh, run into an apartment with a dark light and, and commit adultery with somebody's woman and think the Lord don't see you. All right. He's not bound by human laws and limitations. All right. You can't think that, OK, what well, the Lord says he's going to destroy Babylon and the grave. So if I get a bunker off some Rick Ross shit, I'm going to be straight. No. No, because the Lord has created such a thing as known as bunker busters. And bunker busters aside, it only takes one angel to get you wherever you at. Angels are not bound by these things because they are doing the will of the Lord. And his will will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So once the Lord, you know, and, and if something gets done in earth, it's because the Lord had already put, he, he already basically put out the order in heaven. All right. And now, I'm, now I remember the precept. That I originally wanted to get. The Wadi Hell Bash Miao Shah. Yep. There we go. Um, Where do we have it at? I'm going to get Romans chapter 2. Starting at verse. Okay, come on, here we go. Romans chapter 2, verse... I'm going to start at verse 20. No, verse 19. Romans chapter 2, verse 19, and it reads, And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preaches a man that should not so like it, thou that preachest a man should not steal. Dost thou steal? Thou that saith a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorst idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that make thy socket, thou that makest 
thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou the Most High Yahweh Bashmi Shah? For the name of the Most High Yahweh is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. All right. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Right. So basically what Apostle Paul is saying right here in the book of Romans is, you know, don't be a hypocrite, which is through the spirit. The Wadi Yahweh Al Shai lines up right up with what Lord Yahweh Shai was saying to the wicked scribes and Pharisees, how they were being hypocrites. And that word hypocrite is just a fancy way of saying actor, meaning you'll portray that you have a certain image, but internally you're not really about that. Internally, you think it's a joke. You you think you know it's it's, too, it's you think it's lame, or you just it does does it just doesn't resonate. Your spirit is not resonating with the Holy Spirit, so you do these things so so you can be um praised by men, but you not you don't really believe in your how about me out shy, and the Lord he doesn't like that. So ultimately, you're gonna get dealt with unless he puts the spirit on you to repent. And like the um like the elder Natazakia said a while back of uh, GMS Chicago, you know like. When uh when that when the elder and his um and um the other elder that was with him, I believe he's an elder, when they was talk he was talking about it and he was saying when they came into the truth it wasn't cool around that time. But now it's admittedly speaking, despite all the controversy, it is significantly more trendy, so to speak. I don't like to use that word, but you know, two thirds of our people they do things based off a of trend, so it applies to them, but the truth is more trendy now than it was before. So you got Jakes that will sit right here and try to be deep, learn the precepts just so they can be praised by men, but not for your how about me out shy sake. And that's wicked. But back to the main point of this precept, when I, when uh, the beloved apostle Paul said, um, that circumcision is made uncircumcision. That's referring to, yeah, you can really, you can be physically circumcised according to the law, but if you're not keeping the law, you're being a hypocrite. It's basically the same as if you've been uh, uncircumcised. The same way you have Jakes that were physically uncircumcised, like our forefather Abraham and, and you know these Israelite foreigners that were coming back into the fold. They were moving in such a way through the spirit that you know, unless you knew for a fact that they were uncircumcised, you would have you would have basically been like, man, he moving like one of the circumcision. He moving like he really got physically circumcised and he was raised in the customs. It's because of the faith in Yahweh Shai. Now, ultimately, yeah, some of them, more, I think some of them did eventually get circumcised. They didn't stay uncircumcised. But the point is, you know, Apostle Paul is saying that, you know, these um these first covenant standards of the law, it never brought perfection in the law. Now, the law itself is righteous, but the first covenant standard couldn't be kept by us in this flesh. That's why in the new covenant, the only thing that changed is literally us. In the aspect of the sacrificial laws being done away with through Yahweh Shah, we don't have to do animal sacrifice anymore. And in the kingdom, we won't do sin offerings. We'll do, well, we will more than likely still do free, uh, the free will offerings and the peace offerings, you know, to, Yah to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. And the fact that we'll be changed by having the perfect bodies where we won't sin. So the law was always perfect. We just couldn't keep it. All right. Romans chapter 2, verse... 26 and it reads therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision and that goes into what i just said right there you had um israelite foreigners that looked like they were romans uh galatians thessalonians um corinthians philippians so forth and so on and you know they were moving in such a way they were moving with more faith than the uh the Israelites that were raised in Jerusalem in the customs. You know, they was honoring the Lord more than those that were born physically circumcised. Because they those didn't those that were born physically circumcised, not all of them, but a good number of them didn't believe in our Lord Yahweh Shah, and that's the only way that you can be justified in the eyes of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Verse 27. And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision those transgress the law right because those that were uncircumcised essentially if they are keeping the laws through faith in Yahweh Shai all right and they continue to the end they be revealed to be one of the elect they'll be um they'll be in that rulership position in the kingdom of heaven and those jakes that were on this side that were boasting in the law you know 
that basically, you know, they were boasting in the law, but they weren't, you know, they kept rejecting our Lord by doing so. They're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 28, for he is not a Jew. And this is the point for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Right. Verse 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of the most high yahweh bahasham yahweh shah aman so right there it lets you know that it's all about the internal change man this is why I like a physical water baptism it never did the trick and 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 the one thing about that i noticed is with you know even with the water baptism those that came to john's baptism to get um baptized for them to even um those that were the fruit me for repentance the reason why they did it in the first place was because they truly were seeking salvation they truly wanted repentance they truly had a broken spirit and contrite heart about what they did so through faith they did what they did and then when yahweh came they believed those who um were of the elect they believed in the lord the same way they believed in john's baptism whatever the lord yahweh presents to us through his prophets hey if you do this and that do this and do, do this and your uh, sins will be cleansed they believe they believe the report you know, first covenant standard, we had to offer animal sacrifice. Those that truly believed in the word of the Lord, they did it. We got taken down. We got, um, you know, put in multiple captivities. By the time John the Baptist came on the scene, all right, those that believed in Heavenly Father Yahweh, they came to John's baptism for repentance of water because they believed. Not because the water was going to cleanse them, but because they believed in the Lord. And when Yahweh Shah came on the scene, they believed that the Lord was who he said he was according to the prophecy and they believed and those that believed they truly they were able to uh, get true repentance they were able to truly start to walk in the spirit so it's not to fulfill the lust of the flesh and let me see if I can get this precept showing that um, the circumcision of the heart is not just New Testament because you know you got a lot of jakes that are simple and they um They'll sit right there and be like, well, you know, Paul made a lot of suggestions. No, Paul was still teaching what the Lord taught him. All right. Let me see if I, I, I believe it's right here. Fiend uh, on the heathen. Gather you, spend water, and cleanse you. There we go. The Wadi Halabash Miao Shah. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36. And I'm going to start at verse 22. Something that says, Israel to be renewed for his name's sake. And it reads, Therefore say unto you, the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And that's the spirit, the Wadi Yahweh, that goes back into, um, you know, the Lord's name being profaned among the Gentiles. Verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen. All right. And these heathen are referring to the, uh, you know, the actual heathen, the actual other nations that are not Israelites because Israel was scattered, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. And the way in the way that our people profaned the Lord's name among the heathen was by following the ways of the heathen. You know, they didn't hold the Lord down. They didn't hold the Lord in high esteem where I don't give a damn how many heathen I'm around. I'm, I'm an Israelite from my respective tribe and I have orders from Yahweh Bashmi Al to serve him and glorify his name. I don't give a fuck about your idols. Jake wasn't doing that. Jake kept inquiring after these idols, which the Lord commanded us not to do. Read on. Say the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And how is the Lord going to do that? For verse 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols which I cleanse you. I will give you also, Salakia, a new heart also will I give you, which is the Hebrew word lob, which means your mind. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart 
out of your flesh and will give you an heart of flesh. And that gets into that circumcision of the heart, which Apostle Paul was talking about. Because you had Jake's that was getting physically circumcised, but they still had that stony heart, that first covenant standard of the laws being written on stone. And even though Jake wasn't keeping them and Jake kept going off constantly by the time of our Lord being on the scene, the stony heart, had, you know, fully set in where Jake, you know, first off, the stony heart manifested when Jake being Jake being stiff necked in the wilderness, not listening to the Lord and complaining every two seconds. Then after a while, it manifested also in the way of Jake being um being so convinced that salvation came by the perfection in the law when jake never once kept the law perfectly you know that bondage right there of being you know like like uh, people say in the world bend but don't break all right jake kept breaking the law you know jake tried to keep the, the, this stony heart but you know you kept breaking the law and the lord kept breaking you in half by putting you in captivity so with the heart of flesh, you know, what is flesh? Flesh is soft compared to stone. You know, it's more uh, more malleable. So this gets into the new covenant. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And that shows you this is the new covenant because Jake never once perfectly kept the covenants. Only, um, sorry, yeah. Jake never once perfectly kept the judgments and walked in the Lord's statutes. Only Yahweh Shah did that while in the flesh. Verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your power. I will also save you from all your uncleanliness, and will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Con. So right here, your Howard Bosch Mel Shah is letting you know the true uh, internal change. That's what he always wanted. All right. And that's what the men of the Lord are doing right now. And, you know, the elect lady and the, and the children that believe all through the spirit and power of your Howard Bosch Mel Shah. I don't want to write this out. We'd be of that very elect number. But this is all. This is what it's about, man. Jake has to realize that no matter what what happens we have to always keep striving towards that perfection you know striving for the masteries but that's all i have for this epistle hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of israel to the hopeful elect of the nation of israel once again i want to give all praises honor and glory to our beloved heavenly father and it's only to be god and son our beloved lord and savior yahweh bahasham yahweh shai bahasham rechak wadash double honors as always to the apostles the others in the sincere archim of great millstone who rule well who teach well who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bareness or serious citations, as always, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and a Baba Ball. We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah, and we got next Adawan Ratazah. Shema, Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad. Shalom.